the shoe stringers, the bodgers, the corner cutters are going to absolutely love this episode. But the perfectionists, well, please just go easy on the dislike button, okay? Of course, this is the refit of the 35 slash 38 foot aging catamaran with its many, many defects. And um, we're trying to remedy those with some pretty budget friendly remedies. Enjoy the video. Okay, so it's moving now. A bit of heat and it's uh, come up nicely. So, that's the old one. Wow. That's the new one. Blue yeah. Wave, 7 16th of an inch. Much yeah. chunkier, stronger, better. Voila. Nice cheap and fast fix. This one will go at the mast and then I will fix it oops, at the bottom with the old Norseman terminal with a new cone. This is the wire and we take off the outside wire like so and you're left with the core slide on the cone. I'm trying not to cut myself. Uh, and then we wrap these bits around, leaving a bit of space at the end. So there's your cone. And of course I uh, forgot to put this on, so I will do that again. <laughs> and if I mess it up, it's not too much of a problem because I bought a load of those cones. And there we go. I'll just tighten that up. Put some Loctite on it. I can always dab a bit of uh, silicone in there, but I'll probably do this, take it apart again and just do it again. <laughs> and there we go. Nadiana wants to do the piece of rigging tomorrow. So she's training on this little piece here. She needs to take out the clevis pins basically. Or clevis pen or clevis pins, I don't know what they're called. I should have another tool. It will make it much easier. <laughs> Yesterday I actually met a lady, an English born and bred lady who doesn't like English tea. And I was very surprised. Okay, I'm getting there. Perfect. Thank you. That's how you want it. You want it to drop on my head. <laughs> Let's see how the master does it. So, get your pincer in. Pull. Pull and twist. That's one. Get your thing. Pull and twist. Pull and twist. Wow. So, I am... Um, shortening this main backstay it was at the end of its uh what do you call it screw thread and uh, i think what it is it's just not been measured properly when it was done because the wire is in good condition so basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut it at the wire take that much off replace the cone inside here and attach it and have a fix on this backstay for the price of 8 euros, which is really nice. Like I said, I'm doing this because the quality of the cable seems pretty good and all the main rigging is really good. So we're going to give this a try and it's a very cheap and easy fix. I'm sure a lot of people will think this is uh, a little bit cutting corners. Hmm, 
very difficult to get out. So I managed to get it off. That's the cone that was inside. I'm just gonna clean it up inside here. And I will add silicone this time uh, because I'm using the older wire so I do wanna make sure it's sealed properly. So it was very difficult to get the cone on so I was just hammering it in there. With the help of my assistant, Nadiana. Le assistant. Le assistant. You can use butyl tape or butyl caulking. You can use all sorts of uh, like silicone-y things. I'm just going to use this. It's actually a high temperature silicone, uh, which resists <laughs> fuel and that lot, which is completely overkill, but it's, it's all I've got at the moment. Looks good. You need help? No, I'm all right. Ah, come on, you beggar. Jail. Oh. I don't think this needs thread sealant on it. <laughs> and there we have some cheap fix. What do you think? One corner cut too far or shrewd frugalism? Let us know. All right, you had your practice yesterday. You're gonna take off the clevis pin. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Cool. And I'm already. <laughs> okay, we need to get your tools. Okay. This one. That one. Is that one better than yesterday's one? Yeah. Okay. Okay, get in your chair. Your little bosun. So graceful. <laughs> So, so I need to climb. Just do a little bounce test, all right, just to check everything's okay. Okay. Bounce, bounce, bounce. All right. So you can help me by just I can't, kind of... Yeah, I can't really. I can't really climb. Yeah, you're tied down, you're all safe, you're set, and you can do your work. <laughs> so, it's late at night and I am uh, finishing off this one. Very difficult to get this little cone on though. So from the end of the cone to the end of the line needs to be 1.5 times the diameter of the cone, so it's nine millimeters. That looks about right. And there we have one very shiny cable. Only another six to go. <laughs> the condition of the other ones is not bad, not great. Probably fine for the amount of sailing that we're gonna do over the next uh, few months. We're not gonna be going across the Atlantic. I will look to change all of it over the next year or two. Um, but we're good now, I can get good tension. I can tension the rig with with everything that we've done today, the rig can be tensioned properly. Um, it was just that backstay, it was a little bit um, 
out of its threads and then this one was dead. Uh, a lot of people will say that I should replace the whole thing and um, it's probably right but just don't fancy it to be honest. Um, it would take me a lot longer and I want to focus on the motor tomorrow or over the next couple of days and get all that sorted and then hopefully we can make a solid appointment to go in the water. I also want two or three days before knowing that everything's set up so I can just relax a bit into it and uh, just tidy up a few things like lighting and, and all that stuff. Now when it rings, all I need it to do is close the hatches and tighten up these flappy windows and we're good to go. Watertight. Enjoy the fruit of hard work. <laughs> okay, this should be the final mechanical day. So basically I'm going to change the filter on the hydraulic system. Uh, I'll do that first I think. Then. I need to take off two injectors and try and screw down a castellated nut, that's why I bought this tool. Then I'll put in a new injector where the barb was broken, antifreeze change and one more thing. I managed to find an OM636 thermostat. The only one I could find around the world was in England and it's the same guy who sent us the injector and tool. What's the water for? Cleaning up the bathroom and the holes. Okay. Final cling. Cool. Keep it up here because we'll need to run the engine a bit later on. Ah, okay, cool. So this guy Manfred, who's got all the OM636 parts, he's, he's probably the most reliable and most stocked Mercedes OM636 parts dealer. And he's really nice, gave me some good advice as well. And um, he didn't want to sell me this. He didn't want to sound like he was overselling me stuff, but I said, I'll take it because I'll give it a try. I'll try and uh, fix this injector blow by. If I can't fix it now with this, then I'll still use this later on in the winter, I think, and I'll replace some uh, crushing ring uh, which um, seals the injector or the pre-combustion chamber. Um, sorry, that's probably all a little bit boring to people who don't care about OM636s. But, alas, we progress to the hydraulic system. People said about not using adjustable spanners a couple of videos ago. It wasn't the spanner which uh, slipped when I did my finger, when it cracked through my fingernail. It, it was just me being stupid and crushing my own finger against the, the thing. But I do have this really nice set which I got from Amazon for about £40. I, I should have been using it really anyway. But there you go. So this is the reservoir or tank and this whole system is a bit of a Frankenstein because this thing is Volvo, this says ARS on it and UCC and then the valves they say Gresson hydraulic so I don't know if it was assembled like this but the pipes seem to be in good condition apart from a few leaks. Basically what I'm going to do is drain the tank here and take off the filter and just fill up with new oil. By the time you watch this video it might be a little bit too late but I'd like to hear anyone who's got experience with hydraulic systems. From what I've seen you drain the tank, you change the filter but there's also the little hydraulic motors which go down so if I drain this tank it's not going to drain the fluid out of the system there so I don't know I, I think this is better than nothing um, but um, and I couldn't find any drain screws on the motors, so I don't know. It would be nice to hear uh, what you guys think, uh, you guys with hydraulic experience. And I presume this is the drain. What a nightmare. New technique. So that's the old filter, a little bit rusty so um, obviously that's not great but nice that we're changing it. So here's the new one, I'm just going to oil the gasket and screw it back on. 
Can you show me the funnel that you bought me from AliExpress? <laughs> this was for filling the diesel tank. <laughs> well, it stays then. But it's a good uh, thing to use to fill up the water. Well, I have to fill up hydraulic oil, so I, I had, I've had to make this. It's a little bit bigger. <laughs> just a little bit. So we had to simplify just to a bottle. <laughs> You need to pour slowly though. Well, here it's a bit rusty on the lid. We got a dinghy given to us uh, with some small reparations from a nice couple from this catamaran they already they, they just bought a new dinghy and uh, they said if we don't take it they're going to throw it in a bin so we got the premium choice before the bin <laughs> and my job is to clean it up and clean all this glue out with my glue contact cleaner and uh, we will glue it back and we have a hard rigid floor uh, and the material is Ipalon as well so it's really good I'm so grateful this glue con contact cleaner is the one that I got from cleaning up the windows Just in case you're wondering, this is a very blunt knife. So while Nadiana has been working hard on this dinghy, I bought some new oil. I got the exact same type, not the same brand, but the same viscosity and then the same ISO. And it cost me for 25 liters, 140 euros. <laughs> Uh, but this, this is bio stuff and we're getting bio stuff and it is compatible with mineral oil but um, it is recommended that we flush out all the mineral stuff so I'll top it up with the new stuff uh, run it for a little bit and then do another oil change with this big uh, I'm getting 25 liters and it should be enough so we'll have bio hydraulic oil which is nice So now I'm trying to be really careful with these injectors after breaking two of them. So with this tool I should be able to tighten these. So this is called a castellated nut and it's a special tool. Uh, only sold by Mercedes, so I'll try and twist that because we're getting leakage So I'll try and get some tension on that and these two because these are the main culprits Okay, let's see what we can do. Can we get a turn? something so I've got a little crush washer for the injector new injectors going in new old injector going in 
now to fit this with this radiator hose which was given to us by Uncle Benny. Thank you very much mate. This It's replacing this. This has a, a cut which I've just put some silicone tape over. It's very tight. But we managed to get it on. So it's all looking very solid. The only thing, a bit of a kink in this pipe. Uh, I'm not gonna start it tonight. It's been a long day, so food time and tomorrow we'll start it up, get the throttle sorted and that's pretty much done. Okay, it's a new day, let's get this beast fired up. For coolant, I'm using this coolant mixed with U demineralize so that it doesn't rust the insides. Well, it was running a lot hotter than usual at 90 and a lot of people said, well, that's normal for a diesel engine. Um, but it does say in the book that it's 85. Um, maybe the kink of pipe, maybe the water is a little bit warmer than usual. Maybe the engine's a little bit warmer than usual because of the temperature, I don't know, would that make a difference? Um, but good news is the injectors work really well. The engine itself works really well. In fact, I think it's absolutely fine. I just need to stop worrying really, but uh, yeah, I'll just keep an eye on it. I'll try it again later and do the throttle as well. So it is getting hot again, it's getting up to past 90. I spoke to the, the expert uh, today. He said 90 should be fine, but the it's bad when it gets past 96. That's where, if there's an alarm set, it will go off at 96 degrees. Uh, and we were running, running it for about 20 minutes just then. Started off good. And uh, just started creeping past uh, 90, uh, 90. Two, three. So hopefully it's just the the water in the buckets. Uh, yeah. And yeah, other than that, I, I don't think it's anything serious. I think that it's just it, maybe it needs a flush, mm. a coolant flush. Mm. Um, but I guess now we just need to see when it's in the water so that we can rule out the bucket thing. Yeah, try it in the sea water. Yeah and make sure anywhere we go we can definitely sail <laughs> maybe i'll do the coolant flush i need to i've heard hydrochloric acid is good for that but i need to check with uh, with an expert about that and, uh, i think yeah. i i have trust in murky <laughs> definitely it's it goes up like just one crank it just Starts. Mm, it starts really well. Yeah. It's, uh, the engine is good. Good job. Cool. I wish it was a bit cooler though. <laughs> it's the hot, it's the heat. It's the heat, it's yeah. later on, it's seven o'clock now. But the water is like, you can, you can dip in that water <laughs> without feeling cold. Well, I've officially lost my mind. Shall we? Ooh. Shallow water. 23. Mm. It's the same as the bucket, but... Uh. Today, we didn't have any work done. <laughs> because... <laughs> we are looking after Freaky Dicky. Freaky Dicky. It's a working title for this dog. 
Um, Look. <laughs> so he's a rescue dog and we're looking after him uh, for a week and the people who find him three days ago might uh, she cannot have more dogs because she's already have seven dogs so she might send him to the the center yeah to get like well the pro food. apparently the protocol is they take them for one week and if nobody comes for them after a week they get put down mm. so we're looking after him today and for the next week yeah we give him a shower with the Lise shampoo and lice. He, lice. Um, and he's so sweet he's just so good behavior and never barked and listen to all the things that we tell him even when we've met the first day yeah and he doesn't run off the boat he can get up and down the ladders and just when I've been doing the video then he's uh, just been sat watching people go by Mm. But uh, whether it's a viable thing to have a dog on a, on a boat, on this boat, is, uh, we're not sure, but uh, yeah. we can't see him go off to be killed. Yeah, that would make me feel so bad. If anyone's, I think he's about six, he looks like a puppy, but apparently he's six years old. Mm. So if anyone's interested in a very good boy. <laughs> and he, he, see? <laughs> How can you not do it? Look. <laughs> but basically, there's no chip in him. There's no... I don't know. I mean, I guess he's not had any injections or anything. Thank you everyone for subscribing. Now we hit the 50k mark. High five. <laughs> High five. High five. <laughs> 50,000 people clicked the button. And if you're watching and you've not clicked the button, then stop peeping, okay? <laughs> this is a club for subscribers only. <laughs> well, it's actually okay. It's fine. But uh, thanks for going out of your way to subscribe to us and keep up with our stories. And uh, thank you so much to everyone who has been to our coffee page. Mm. If you're wondering exactly when we're going to go in the water, we're going to reveal that information on coffee on the website yeah and some extra updates on there as well just yeah. to thank you guys uh, properly and thank you to everyone of course who just likes the videos and mm. who gets this far in the video and give us comments as well that's yeah. really interesting uh, we do try to read every single comment so we get all your advice mm. And um, your love as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm reading the comments, my face is like so sore afterwards because I'm smiling so yeah. much about the comments. It's it, so nice. Yeah, it is good. It gives you a little boost. Uh, it makes Definitely. you feel makes you feel good about what you, what we're doing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Here's to fifty thousand more and a <laughs> successful launch. <laughs> so greedy. <laughs> he says thanks. Even though he's only joined us late on in the stage, <laughs> late on in the game. Yeah. Where were you when we had zero subscribers, Yoshi? Where were you? <laughs>